brings us to our last relationship, and we are going to call her Buttercup. Buttercup. <laughs> and, you know, Buttercup, I will have to say, was kind of unexpected. She matched with us um, right at the end of the relationship, you know, with Coco. So I have to say it was like an unintentional rebound. We did pour a lot of our feelings into this new relation with Buttercup because we were having a hard time letting go of things with Coco. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, you know, we had a lot of good practices that we were already using when it came to dating separately and how we were gonna try to build this triad with Buttercup. Um, so right from the beginning, we still ignored some kind of big red flags. Um, you know, one of the big red flags we ignored was that she told us from the jump she wasn't very good with communication. Right. She was about eight or nine years younger than we were, so I think that also played a part where Coco was more our age, yeah. more matched with our maturity level. Mm -hmm. So um, the the next portion of you know building this relationship with Buttercup, she was so much fun. She was artistic. She Little was ball of energy, like. beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. like meshed so well with us. She lived in Atlanta, so we got an opportunity to build more of that like true living, you know, cohabitating relationship. Sure, sure. Um, and then you know we started noticing that there were some things she was having a hard time with when it came to building our individual relationships. Me and Buttercup, we we connected right away. Yeah. But with you guys, it was like a little bit different. She had a hard yeah, time overcoming she, I think that. she, I could tell when a woman's into me. So I knew that she was into me. I knew that she was attracted to me, but I could tell that she was a little uneasy when we all were together. Um, how she interacted with me was a little bit more different than Mel. It felt more like she was interacting with me as a friend because uh, again, it was like more shy energy. But we did address it with her. You know, we were doing a lot of educating during this relationship because she didn't have any experience in polyamory. So there were plenty of times where we, you know, tried to let her know that she didn't have to treat Sammy any differently, mm -hmm. that this was something I was really into. It kind of like hurt my feelings sometimes because I was like, I love to see you guys like affectionate with each other. It right. makes me happy. So, but all that being said, I feel like I was able to take what I've learned from the Coco and Millie relationships and utilize it in this relationship with Buttercup and realize that to expect that the relationship with that Mel and Buttercup were building was going to build at the same pace and intensity that me and Buttercup were trying to build, it's not realistic, right? Uh, so I had to give her grace and offer patience and just wait it out a little bit. And you know, since I did stick it out, we were able to get there and it kind of was with Mel's help. Um, if you kind of want to talk, touch on that a little bit more. I think I was just going out of town and I like encouraged you guys to spend the whole weekend together. Mm -hmm. And I think that after you guys had not just like a date and a day together, but like a whole weekend and her sure. being with you here without me around, I think you guys were able to open up more to each other. So um, it worked out for, for that benefit. But what ended up kind of being the end of the relationship was the other red flag that we missed, which is the communication. You know, mm. the first time that kind of a a moment arised where things weren't going exactly as planned. You know, um, Buttercup kind of withdrew and did a lot of stonewalling and avoided the issue. And so because she didn't like to communicate and she let us know that she was someone who didn't like confrontation, um, it kind of just festered and ultimately led to the demise of the relationship. We never got an opportunity to talk about this moment that happened. Um, and just kind of work through it and move forward from it. And so because of that, it was also a big indication for Sammy and I that based on the complexities that are in a polyamorous triad when it comes to communication and, right. and what it takes to be a polyamorous person that, you know, this was probably going to be an obstacle that we couldn't overcome. Mm. Yeah. And that really was kind of the way that that relationship came to a close. For me, I feel like what I learned in the buttercup situation is that, you know, communication is key. What do you feel like you learned in that situation? Yeah, I think that what I learned from the Buttercup situation was, you know, A, one of the main things was don't ignore, yeah, communication and, and red flags. But I think also just the rejection that I experienced because the moment that happened was between Buttercup and I and not between you and Buttercup. Mm -hmm. um, that was my first time really experiencing and leaning into the fact that maybe this relationship was really going to become a V relationship and perhaps that Sammy and Buttercup would keep dating, you know, and I would kind of not be seeing her anymore. Um, and I really encouraged that. I, yeah. I, I told her right from the jump, like, if you guys want to keep building and you guys want to keep seeing each other, I was all for it. Um, but I think, again, that obstacle of her kind of getting past you being my husband and this kind of a dynamic being a little bit abnormal, I don't think she was really interested in yeah, pursuing a relationship. She kind of just let your relationship fall to the wayside. Yeah, as like well. even our friendship, you know, I feel mm -hmm. like she kind of just, I don't know, just what, like, how do I even say it? She just kind of like cut 
communication off completely to the relationship with me, which, again, there goes the theme when it comes to communicating, you know, so. Right, so. With all that being said, I feel like, again, we learned a lot from that relationship. I don't take anything back from that relationship. I feel like Buttercup is, uh, you know, she's on her own journey in life, and the fact that she is a lot younger than us, I hope that she was able to gain something from the relationship, and, you know, it was able to help her grow in certain ways, too, so. Shout out Buttercup. I think that without each one of these three relationships and three women um we wouldn't really be where we are today you know we are so blessed and grateful to have spent the time that we did with each of these women and we've learned so much about ourselves individually learned so much about how polyamory works we've learned so much about you know just relationships in general um communication so thank you to each and every one of these women and we wish them nothing but the best all all love over here Mm -hmm. um and you know I guess that really is it. That wraps it up. That was our three relationships so far. Those are our three relationships. If you guys are interested in learning more about polyamory, obviously go follow us on TikTok and Instagram. So if you have any other questions or you're curious about any of the more of those juicy details of those past relationships, please drop it in the comments and you know hopefully we'll get to that. And if you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. We truly do appreciate you. And if you have any more suggestions for future videos, please also drop that in the comments. Yes, if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram, follow us on TikTok. We also have our Patreon, we have our podcast, and um, we have more great polyamorous content coming your way. Shout out to all the pop stars out there. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time on Pursuit of Poly TV.